Hi again. In this video, we're going to uh, work with a sampling distribution where our population is not a normal distribution. Okay, so we're going to see how that's different and uh, do the conditions and calculate a probability. Okay, so let's look at our example. Just uh, want to highlight that this is starting with a population that is not normally distributed. Okay, so restaurant bills at a given restaurant have an assumed population mean of $32.40 and a population standard deviation of $8.16. This might be from some data over time where they feel like this is really representative of the, of the whole population. This data is heavily skewed to the left. Okay, so let's think about what that might look like. Skewed to the left, because we have a tail over there. So it means there's a lot of bills kind of on this higher end and maybe a few towards the lower end. So we don't know, well, we know our mean is, but we don't know exactly what this higher value is. Um, this, I think this would also have to be given a certain party size. We don't know how many people are um, in the, at the table or on the bill. Um, so given a, a certain table size, party size, um, there probably is sort of some kind of upper limit that people are bouncing up against and then it's um, skewed to the left. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Then there might be a few people that order, um, you know, something uh, small, only an appetizer, or just a salad or something like that. Okay, so the first question is, explain why you cannot determine that a given bill will be at least $35. Okay, why can't we do a probability for this? Um, and that's because we don't have this distribution in um, online stat book or in GeoGebra. We don't have enough information about this skewed information to find a probability, okay? So because it's not normal. So because the population is skewed, we cannot calculate the probability for a single value. Let's say a single bill in this case, okay? We don't have a formula for that. Okay, so can't do that. But that's usually not what we wanna do anyway. We usually wanna take a sample and take an average. So, Here's the next question. Can you estimate the probability that the next five bills will average at least $35? Discuss each of the conditions for using the sampling distribution of the mean. So discuss each of the conditions. Okay, so what's your first hit? Can we do it with five? What did we see on the um, simulation? And both with the bucket and on the computer program when we started, we, ours was skewed to the right, but five was not enough, right? So I'm gonna write no, and then, but I'm gonna do the conditions in order, okay? So one was independence. Okay, if we were sampling five or later we're gonna do 50, so let's just, um, we know we can't do five, but we do wanna do 50. So um, would our conditions be met? Oh, actually, how do I wanna write this? If we average the next 50, would all of the conditions be met? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and write my conditions right up here, since I have less space down there. So for independence, um, what would we need for these bills to be independent of each other? Um, let's think about what, you know, as long as one table's not influencing another, so if they're not um, tables within a larger group, then they probably would ind be independent of each other. So bills need to be independent. Um, bills need to be independent. One group does not influence another. Okay. 
It can't be like a big fundraising night where, you know, everyone's getting more because it's going to a good cause. So one group cannot influence another. That's what we need for independence. And also 10% condition, we must sample less than 10% of the population. Okay, because we, in this case we would sample without replacement. We wouldn't take this bill and then randomly select that bill again. We would make sure we would be sampling without replacement. So the X is without replacement. Okay, two is randomization. Okay, we need to select the bills randomly. We need to use some kind of random number method. Um, often I think tables have numbers, so that could be an identifier, but then of course there's multiple uh, parties at that table, so um, whoever's doing this would need to use some kind of random method. And then three, sample size. Um, because we're starting with a skewed population, we need n to be 30 or more. n must be greater than or equal to 30 to be normal. Okay, so this one is no because n equals five. So that one does not work. But then if we take an average of the next 50 bills, then we could meet all those conditions, right? So yes, if n equals 50, the sample size condition is met. Okay, so. Now for 50, we can draw our model. So we can't do it for one, can't do it for five, can't do it for 29. Um, well, between 25 and 30 is debatable, but uh, we're gonna say it has to be greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so define the model with its parameters. So remember, we're gonna use our um, formula box. Here's how we define our model. So we're talking about the model of the average of 50 bills. X bar is normal because the conditions are met. And we're going to use our original population mean, $32.40. And our standard deviation of $8.16. Oh, sorry, not quite done yet. Divided by the square root of what? 50, because we are averaging 50 bills, okay? Let's go ahead and calculate our new standard deviation. $8.16 divided by the square root of 50 is 1.15. Since this is dollars and cents, well, what do I want to do here? I think for, for the drawing, I'm gonna do dollars and cents, but for technology, I think we should still keep it more accurate. 1.15399, so that's gonna go from 39 to 40. So 1.1540. For technology, and a dollar and 15 cents for drawing. Oh, or those might be the same if you're doing your drawings in um, using technology with online stat book. Okay, so now we can draw it. Luckily I've got a little more space on this one, so I'm going to make it big. Nice and big. So the mean is $32.40. I'll just do a dollar sign once on here. I won't really have enough space. Okay, so a dollar fifteen for the drawing, thirty-two forty plus a dollar fifteen plus one fifteen.
15. It's 115. Okay, so now we've got 3355, 3470, and 3620. Because we've averaged 50, it's the standard deviation is pretty small, right? A dollar and 15 cents. Not very big. Now then let me go the other way. 3240 minus $1.15. Oops. Minus a dollar fifteen minus a dollar fifteen. So thirty one twenty five thirty ten and twenty eight ninety five. Okay, I'll add another dollar sign there. Okay, so let's write what this is. This is the average of random samples of 50 bills, okay? So, or you could say average bill for um, groups, uh, what did I say? Average of 50 restaurant bills, that's another thing you could say. to make it too long. Average of 50 restaurant bills, okay? Or you could say average of random samples of 50 restaurant bills. Okay, so now we can find a probability. How likely is it that the next 50 bills have an average of at least 35? So what's the probability that X bar is at least 35. Okay, so let's go back to our online stat book. Put in our new number. So now we have 32, oops, 3240 and 1.154. zero or not, and above 35 bucks, maybe this is per person, I don't know, depends on the restaurant, right? So the probability is 0 0.0121, not very big, right, because this is all the way out here, 3470, 36, it's somewhere in here. And it's about a 1.2% chance. Oops, back to the notes. It's over here, $35. So it's a pretty small probability. Okay, another question we could answer is find the two values for the middle 50% of the average of 50 bills. So remember, when, whenever you see this word average, that's when you use the sampling distribution. I've already drawn it once. If you've already drawn it once, you don't have to draw it again. You can copy and paste multiple from technology if you want to, but if you're hand drawing, just make a sketch for any ones after that. So I'm just going to draw the middle 50% here, which we know, one, two, three, one, two, three. We know this is 68 from the empirical rule, so I know it's a little bit inside of that. Okay, so we're looking for what two dollar values represent the middle 50% or between those two values or the middle 50% of these averages of these random samples. Okay, so we go back to our online stat book for that and we're using our same um, distribution that we've already defined. This time I'm going to go to um, I forgot, I haven't done this one for a bit. Okay, yeah, sorry, I need to go to inverse normal for this one. I haven't been doing this for a little while. So uh, 3240, we want the uh, between is what we're looking for. Oops, it doesn't like something I put in here. Um, so area, oh, that's another problem. So we want 0.5 as our area, the middle 50%. And then our mean is 32. 
40. And our standard deviation is 1.15. Four, and then we want the between. Okay, so this is area is the middle 50%. You can see it matches up with my picture how it's just inside the first standard deviation on each side. Our mean is 3240, just double check, 1.154. Okay, great, so let's write this down. 31.622. And 33.178. Okay, so those are our two values, and because this is money, I'm gonna then round these to the cents, okay? So the middle 50% of averages um, is between. 31.62 and 33, I gotta round that one, 33.18. Okay, so that's a question someone might wanna know, like if we just wanna measure, you know, the middle 50% to be safe, what would those bills be between? Okay, so that gives you two different examples. One um, with starting with a normal distribution one starting with a skewed distribution, and then either in class or in, in the uh, participation worksheets, you'll get to see some more examples there, okay? So try it out, and let me know if you have any questions, okay? And I'll see you in the next video.